I'll talk about the different sources that would be used in the LINAC and their effects on the X-rays produced. So first, the way that X-rays are produced by the LINAC. An electron produced by the electron gun that we detailed earlier interacts with uh, an atom in the with with the source's atoms by coming in, kicking out one of the low energy electrons, which causes one of these electrons from a higher energy level to drop down and fill in this lower energy state. And this change emits a photon. And based on how uh, extreme this change was, if it went from, for instance, the second energy level to the first, this would be called the K alpha X ray. Third to the first would be K beta third to second L alpha, et cetera. Um, the different frequencies of these different emission lines are detailed in the Mosley plot here, which I've sketched. Uh, on the vertical axis, we have atomic numbers, so we can tell what different uh, sources produce different energies, because we can relate frequency to energy. And this uh, is the horizontal axis, which I just said is frequency measured in hertz over 10 to the 16th. And here we have data on the different energy levels of the x-rays produced by tungsten of different characteristics. So for instance, the K-alpha has 59,318 electron volts. Uh, the K-alpha-2 has 57,000, et cetera. Hello. From the design portion, we come to understand how a line act works. Now, with the equation behind me, we'll figure out how much is in each dose of radiation for the machine. Now, first to establish the dose inside of the absorbed by the person and the dose that come from the machine are exactly the same, which is why in the equations above, these two are written as dose equal to dE over dm and dose equal to dose rate times time. Now, dose rate is has fluence, which is represented by this symbol, and density, which is represented by this. Now, fluence rate is written as particles over the cross section, dA, divided by S, which is second. Density itself is specifically for a tungsten, which is why you see a value, and that value is 0 0.01925. Now, by adjusting the dimension of the source, dx, dA, the energy, dE, and time, you can figure out how much exactly is in each dose, dose from the machine. And that will be proven in our experiment in the next section. And deliver radiation dose to an internal body organ of a specified amount. In this design, we created a conformal linear accelerator to treat any cancer in any organ of a patient. The design that we have can deliver a varying X-ray amount, measured in grades, of course, that can be adjusted by the equation dose rate times time. In this example, we specifically cover breast cancer, which is most effectively treated by 50 grades in 25 fractions. And why do I say most effectively treated? That is because you can only properly treat tumors if they are T1 or T2 size tumors using external beam radiation therapy. And another very important thing is the shape of the tumor, which is why our specific linear accelerator has multi-leaf tungsten collimators at the very end to adjust to the size using all these tungsten sheets right here to adjust to the size and the shape of that tumor. Of course, the cost comes out to 2.8 million, but I don't think that's because of the tungsten. That's because of the design, which we will go into next. Here we have a rough diagram of the linear accelerator. It all starts here at the electron gun, which fired an electron into the accelerating waveguide. Then accelerates that electron to the proper speed for it to enter the electron transport system, which is in this case a magnet that bends the electron to go to the multi-leaf parameter. Then it is attuned to the proper shape and size of the tumor that it needs to treat and it's then shot down at the patient here. Here we have the modulator, which regulates the amount of energy produced by both the electron gun and the microwave power source. It's important to note that we are able to exchange the mediums within the system. That will become important in the equations portion later. When testing the linear accelerator, there are two ways. One way is to use a tracker. Radiation therapists use a tracker before testing it on a patient to see if the radiation intensity is the same throughout the beam. Another way to test the linear accelerator is sometimes they have built-in checkers where in this case the linear accelerator won't even turn on unless it has met the prescribed treatment requirements. And a few courses you should take as a radiological engineer are Image with ionizing radiation, NPRE-435, MCB-403, which is Cell and Membrane Physiology Lab, 
and NPRE444, which is Nuclear Analytical Method Methods Lab.